Hello, and welcome to the fourth part of Internal Responsibility, Why Should I Be Concerned? This is the fourth um, part of a four-part series. If you have not completed sections one, two, and three, I would recommend you complete those before continuing on to the mini module four. So this section is going to cover two topics. What is minimum compliance? What does that mean? And why should I be concerned? So when we talk about the minimum compliance, minimum compliance is really around the legislation. So we have the Occupational Health and Safety Act, the regulations, standards, but those really are the minimum standards required. And, and we all know that even when, even though we're, we may be meeting all the legislative requirements, that incidents and injuries are still happening. Therefore, it begs the question, the minimum compliance is just that. It's to take care of the most serious injuries, to try to mitigate the injuries, but it doesn't eliminate them if you're only ever doing the minimum compliance. So in order to ensure that you have a safe workplace, you have to go above and beyond the standards that are set out there. And if we think about that, we don't accept meeting a minimum score. Um, when we think about client safety, there's a lot of focus on client safety. And when we think that we have to think about worker safety in the same way, in the same as client outcomes, we don't accept a minimum standard. We wouldn't be proud to say that and customer satisfaction. So we think about putting it into perspective against other things we measure in our organization. We don't want to be at the minimum. We want to be at the highest we possibly can. And we should strive to do the same for health and safety. So the other perspective, the other way of looking at it is how would you feel, uh, would you feel safe using some of these following services, if you knew they were only striving to meet the minimum safety standards, so meat processing. So that's been in the news a lot the last few years where there's problems with various manufacturers manufacturing meat, and we eat that. We consume that. We give that to our families. So do we want to um, purchase meat from companies that are saying, oh, well, we meet the minimum standard? Tire manufacturers. A few years ago, there was a big um, issue around um, a tire company, and there was lots of um, fatalities and accidents. And airline companies, you know, would you like to go on an airline and they're all hepped up? It's like, yeah, we've met the minimum requirements. We look at airlines as having very high standards. And it, although when um, plane crashes happen, it's, it's in the news, but there's not very many compared to other Things. So just put that into perspective and think, you know, when we're talking about our occupational health and safety, the minimum standard most likely isn't enough. We need to do more than that. And as well, when we think about why should I be concerned, why does it matter, how does it affect me, and how does it affect the people next to me, and we look at the human toll, the pain, the suffering, the impact on families, the impact on the organization. So when we think about the impact on the individual first, it's not just about them not being able to do their job, it's them not being able to do all the things they like to do in their, in their private life, whether it's spend time with the family, whether it's do hobbies, whatever it is, it's a huge impact. And when you had somebody who has a significant injury, it significantly affects the family, and it also affects the organization. You know, um, it's getting more and more challenging to get health care workers. So when you lose one, especially in some of the rural communities, it's difficult to find a replacement short-term, long-term, and all of that. So, you know, it has an impact. The organization's paying overtime and um, doing the retraining piece or extra training for that person that's out. Then ethically, it's the right thing to do. I mean, but even though it's the right thing to do, it doesn't mean it's easy. It's not always easy, but we know it's the right thing to do. And we come to work every day, and all employers and all employees don't plan on getting hurt. Employers don't plan on their staff getting hurt. 
but it happens. And so we need to do everything we can to reduce the chances of that happening. Then there's the financial impact. And that's on both the organization and the injured employee. So from the employee's perspective, you know, you're getting reduced wages. You're, um, so that has an impact. Um, you're also having um, difficulties with, you know, missing opportunities to, to, to do an overtime shift or make that extra money, as well as it's the quality of your work life. And then on the organization side, it affects the insurance or the WCB rates. It affects productivity. If you're working for a company that is hurting a lot of people, that recruitment and retention um, has a negative impact. They're like, you don't want to work there. And then, of course, there's the legal impact where whether it's prosecution, fines through the Department of Labor can come into effect. So that, that sums it up. But I think the, the, the nice way to really wrap up why it's so important is a video that was done by um, WCB. So I think that um, sums up very nicely um, sort of the, the impact and the impact that, that we think about most is our family, and we do all want to come home at the end of the day. And we want to come home as healthy and maybe healthier than we started the day. So even though in um, health care and community services we've, we've been fortunate that we haven't had a lot of fatalities, um, not like some other industries, but we permanently disable people every day um, in the healthcare system and community services. So we need to do everything we can to make sure that we don't um, have those experiences for folks. So I think the key things to think about is, you know, what what do people need to know, and what do you need to do every day when it comes to what can you do to carry your part of the IRS and your organization. So you've now completed mini module four, why should I be concerned? Please complete the form and the questions below um, this video. And now that you've, uh, if you've completed all four modules, then we will be sending a certificate your way. Thank you very much. <laughs>